Okay, so we're done with the molasses. We're gonna put this stuff out of the way and make a little more room. All right, I need your help now, big time. We're gonna put our dry ingredients in here, okay? So we need to start with two and three quarter cups of flour. We use our dry measures again when we're doing flour, especially because we don't want it to be packed down. So I'm going to scoop out of the bag and I'm going to level it off so that I have a true measure for flour. I'm going to need that to level it off. Thanks, buddy. You can have it back in a minute, okay? So, see, bud, we scoop. We just level it off like that. Can you put that in the big bowl? Yeah. Thanks. Careful. Here's one. Perfect. Woo. Can I mix it in? Once we have enough stuff in there for you to mix, you can absolutely mix it. There's two. You put that. Get a good grip on it. All right. Now we need three of these. So how many is that? One, how many is this? Two. Two, good counting. And three. three. Great job, bud. Now can I mix it? There's nothing to mix yet. We need to put the soda, the baking soda, which, mix. there we go. I missed an ingredient when I set it up, dude. Okay, now I need one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda. So we find our one teaspoon right here. Okay, and I'm actually, I mean, I find it easier to do this. I'm gonna put it in here. I wanna put it. Then we're gonna scoop it out. Okay, you put it in the bowl for me. Pour it. Okay, now I, now just double checking, yes. One and a quarter. I need to put another quarter in there. You dump that in there for me. Good job. Oh, all of it. Make sure you get all of it in there, okay? Yeah. Good job. Okay. Next, you keep mixing that, buddy. Now we need all of our dry ingredients. So we need a teaspoon of cinnamon. Can I put a cinnamon in? You can put all of these in. Yay. Yeah. You can mix. Well, you can mix. You can put the dry ingredients in and then mix. Oh, I had to cover off. Make it easier. Okay. Cinnamon first. Put all our spices. Next, we have two teaspoons of ginger. Mm -hmm. Get a clean teaspoon over here. There's not even any sugar in that, dude. Yeah. One? Yeah. Yeah. I'll mix this in. Thank you. We need Good another in. teaspoon in there. Good in. Yeah. You got it all in? Thanks, dude. Next, we need one teaspoon of cloves. I'll do that one. You'll do that one too? I'm gonna do it over this. I'm just gonna do it this way, actually. Mmm, that smells so good. Can you smell that? It smells like mm. I love it in cloves. Oh, so good. Okay. And now we need two oh, teaspoons yes. of nutmeg. Oh, slowly, mix. slowly, buddy. Okay. I'll mix in. One. And two. You put that one in. All right. Mix, mix, mix. Mix, mix, mix. Okay. We need. Half teaspoon of salt. Mm -hmm. 
We're almost gonna be done. We're close. Now, notice how mummy is, I'm measuring this stuff out on the side and I'm not measuring it over the bowl. Do you know why? Because if we pour too much, we don't want it to go in the bowl, right? Because we can put more in if we need to, but we can't take it out. So we always pour off to the side. Oh, see, just like that, there's a little bit too much. But it's not too much in our cookies. All right, you mix that up well, dude. That's good. Now, Mommy, do we put that ingredients in? It's a good question. We put this stuff in with that, and then we let the mixer mix it all up. So that you can help me, I'm going to hold this here. You use the spatula and you help me get it in the bowl. Now it's important when your recipe tells you to do wet ingredients in one dish, in one bowl, and then your dry ingredients in the other, that you follow those directions, because otherwise you might not have the right consistency for your dough, and your cookies might not turn out well. All right. Almost. Let's get the last little bits in there. Can I turn it on this time? Well, as long as you promise to keep your fingers out of the way. I will. Okay, so I'm going to lift it up first. And I'm going to keep my fingers with you, okay? Because it's a big machine. Okay. Start it slowly. Are you? Is it done? It's mixed. And it's ready to be rolled out onto the cookie sheet. So, I'm going to unplug it. Partially because it's time to take the paddle off and partially because you're making me nervous with your fingers so close. All right, so we take our paddle off. Can I take the dough, Mommy? Can you taste the dough? Uh, just mix it. Here you go. Yay. That's yours. It's like one of the best parts of making cookies. All right, we're gonna move this stuff out of the way while you enjoy that. Now, we're actually gonna put a little bit of sugar in this to roll our cookies in. They're sparkly cookies. Okay, so I have my cookie sheet and I have a silicone mat on it, so you can use a silicone mat if you want, if you have one. If not, you can use um, parchment paper, uh, but you don't really need to when you have cookies that have so much butter in them, because if you have, uh, if you spray your pan, if you have a nonstick cookie sheet and you have lots of butter in your cookies and then you spray your pan, your cookies will actually spread out too much and they won't turn out properly. So I'm gonna use the silicone mat because I find if I use parchment paper even with cookies with a lot of butter, um, I find I don't get the right consistency in the cookie that I like. So I'm gonna keep that away from these, okay bud? So what we're gonna do now, we are going to use this. I do usually use an ice cream scoop that has the handle on the side that'll pop it out, but it broke a couple of weeks ago. So we're using this, which is fine. You're going to take up just a little scoop, roll it, kind of like the size of a Timbit, just like that. And then we are going to roll it in the sugar because, hey, it's cookies when they're full of butter and sugar. And then I'm going to put it on the cookie sheet and just gently flatten it, just like that. And we're going to do that for all of our cookies. And then we're going to put them in the oven. It's been preheating already and they bake for 10 to 12 minutes and then we're gonna check them. So we're going to hit pause on this for now and we'll come back once the cookies come out of the oven so I can show you what they're supposed to look like uh, when they're done. Thanks. Can you hit pause please? Thank you. There's no pause. All right, our cookies are done. Oh, we have a smile. Okay, let's show them what we did. So we cooked two dozen 
and this batch makes uh, three dozen cookies. So it makes a lot of cookies. And we don't need three dozen ready to eat cookies in our house right now, because we're not going anywhere and the food is just too easily available. So we took one dozen and prepared them, rolled them, put them in the sugar, flattened them, and then separated them with wax paper in between. And we're gonna put those in the freezer and they'll be ready to bake whenever we want them, whenever we want to cook. Took two cookies or all of them, certainly. So we put wax paper in between. You can use parchment paper too, whatever you have, and uh, just stick them in the freezer. So uh, I did a couple of things differently just to show you that the choices you make when you're baking with your baking times, what you bake them on, uh, does make a difference in the outcome and the result of your cookies. So this is the first batch that we put in. We put these on the cookie sheet with the silicone baking mat. And I also did a couple different sizes because I wanted to show you what happens when you're not consistent with the sizes of the cookies that you put on there. See these ones, nice and golden all around, cooked very well. Then we have the smaller ones that have a little bit of burn around the edges because they ended up cooking longer than they should have because they were on with the bigger ones that needed that time. So it's really important that you try to be as consistent as possible when you are rolling out your cookies. So using a scoop, using a measuring scoop, whatever you need to, really helps with getting that consistent size. Uh, next, these are the ones that we took out at eight minutes. Now usually, uh, those who've been in my class, you know that I always say, check, check on your food a couple of minutes before the minimum time that's recommended in the recipe. Because sometimes an oven, okay, leave the cat alone. Uh, sometimes the oven cooks hotter, sorry buddy, uh, than other ovens. So I always check my food a few minutes before the time that it says. This recipe said to cook them for 10 to 12 minutes. So I did cook these ones at the minimum time recommended, the 10 minutes to show you um, just what might happen. And these ones are definitely um, the crispier, or the crunchier, sorry, the crunchier cookie, which I like because I like a good ginger snap. So. I like that, but if you want a softer, chewier cookie, this is eight minutes. And this is probably what I would bake them at for anybody else. I like them nice and uh, crunchy, so I would take this one, um, but these ones are lovely at the eight minutes and what I would make if I was giving them to somebody else. So I would take this one and this one. That one and that one? After licking all that dough off of the paddle? That's so much sugar in your belly. How about just a little piece right now to taste test it? You can be my taste tester, but that's it because we're gonna have supper soon. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is it good? I feel supper when you want this one. You eat a good supper, you can have that cookie. Okay? We'll see. We'll see. Did you have fun? Did you have fun? Yes. Yes, was a cookie good? Would you make those again? Do they get two thumbs up? Yeah? Two thumbs. Can you show me two thumbs up? <laughs> the other one's got the cookie. That's fine. All right. Thank you for watching. And my students, make sure uh, that you share your labs with me. Uh, send me your pictures or your videos of what you cook and your recipes as well so that I can see what you were doing. Thank you very much. Uh, take care. Have a good day. Stay well. Stay safe. Wash your hands.